All right, in this video, we're going to talk about solving systems of linear equations, but this time we're going to use the method of what's called elimination by addition. Um, and again, as I talked about in the last video, um, or the one that uses uh, substitution, we're graphing, um, you could graph these linear systems of equations, and one of three things gonna, is going to happen. Either the lines are going to cross in one place, Okay, that means you have one solution, and eventually you'll be able to do some algebra to where you'll get x equals some number, y equals some number. Um, the other thing that could happen is the lines could be parallel, and eventually you'll get some sort of nonsensical statement like 8 equals 0. Um, and while that never happens, and what that's indicating is that your lines are parallel, which means that... Um, and in this case they're parallel and non-overlapping so that there's no solutions. The last thing that can happen is you'll end up doing some algebra and you'll get a statement like 0 equals 0 or 12 equals 12 or 5 equals 5 and what that means is really um, it's just the exact same line. Maybe it looks a little different but algebraically it's the same line which means they're overlapping um, which means there would be infinitely many solutions because everywhere they intersect you get a solution. So let's do a few examples here talking about this elimination by addition. Um, and the numbers I'm going to use are going to be hopefully you know fairly straightforward just to keep the uh, the arithmetic to a minimum but obviously you could use these ideas whether you've got fractions or decimals or any other kind of strange numbers floating around if we can call them that. So the idea is what you want to do is you want to basically well eliminate a variable by doing addition or equivalently you could do subtraction. Um, notice here that I've got a positive 2x and a negative 2x um, here at the beginning and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna think about everything notice too everything's lined up I've got my X's I've got my Y's I've got my numbers I'm just gonna simply add up everything um, in each column so maybe I can even put it in parentheses and put a little addition out here so 2x plus negative 2x is 0x 3y plus 7y is 10y and then 4 plus 6 excuse me 4 plus 16 is 20 well, 0x is 0, so we're left with 10y equals 20. We can simply divide both sides by 10, and we'll get that y equals 2. And just like in your procedure uh, when you did substitution, um, now you can use either one of your original two equations, and you simply plug in the fact that y equals 2. So I'm going to use the first one. Um, so it says you'll get 2 times x plus 3 times y, but here we're plugging in again the fact now that y is equal to 2 equals 4, so I'm just using this first line, and now I'll get 2x plus 6 equals 4, okay I can subtract 6 from both sides, 4 minus 6 is negative 2, if I divide both sides by 2 I'll get that x equals negative 1, and these are my solutions this is my solution to this system of equations. It says you're going to have a solution of negative 1 comma 2. Negative 1 for x, 2 for y, and the idea is you can plug negative 1 in for x, 2 in for y, in the first equation you'll get 4, and the second equation you'll get 16. Again graphically if you were to um, you know put these lines on a graph you would find that they're intersecting at the point negative 1 comma 2. All right, so there's one example. We'll do a few more here. Um, notice in this one, if I kind of immediately do my addition, nothing is going to cancel out. The x's wouldn't cancel. I would actually get a negative 6y. Um, and we need one of the variables to be eliminated. So what I'm going to do is, notice if I multiply everything in the second row by a negative 1, well then my y's would cancel out. So I'm going to leave my x minus 3y equals 6 part alone. And then I'm simply going to multiply the first one, or excuse me, the second line by a negative. That'll give me negative 4x, positive 3y, and negative 10. I could have easily, um, you know, multiplied the second, or excuse me, the first row by a negative. So, you know, 
all you have to do is just change one of them so it doesn't matter which one you do so if I do my addition now x plus negative 4x is going to be negative 3x my y's are going to cancel out and then I'll get um, 6 plus negative 10 or 6 minus 10 that'll give me negative 4 I'll divide both sides by negative 3 and that'll give me x equals 4 thirds alright so not a nice whole number but who cares um, so again I'm now going to take my first equation I usually just pick the one that has the smaller numbers floating around I figure that's going to make my arithmetic easier I'll plug 4 thirds in for x then I have minus 3y equals 6 so I have to subtract 4 thirds from both sides so I'll get I'm going to go right 6 is 6 over 1 and then I bring over my minus 4 thirds and again I'm writing um, 6 is 6 over 1 because I'm going to have to get common denominators so I could multiply top and bottom of the first fraction by 3 that will give me 18 over 3 minus 4 over 3 whoops let me squeeze that back in there um, so I've got negative 3y 18 minus 4 is 14 over 3 and then I'm gonna multiply both sides I'm gonna divide by negative 3 which is equivalent to multiplying by negative 1 -third, right the negatives will cancel the threes will cancel that means I have to multiply the right side by negative one-third as well so I'll get y equals and remember with fractions you just multiply across the top you multiply across the bottom and again now we've got our solution it says our solution is going to be four-thirds as we found for x and negative fourteen ninths is going to be our y value Okay, so this is why I think um, either using substitution or this elimination by addition is preferable because, you know, unless you're a great artist, I don't know if, if that I would be able to graph um, these original two equations and somehow tell that they're actually crossing at four thirds and negative fourteen ninths. A calculator is going to give you a decimal, and a lot of times even still it seems like they give you the wrong answer they'll give you some kind of weird answer so gotta be careful about that let's see if we can't squeeze in two more here real quick so um, notice in this one everything is not kind of lined up like we would like to have it so I'm gonna put my X's and I'm gonna put my Y's on the same side so the first thing I'm gonna do to this first guy is I'm gonna add 6Y to both sides I'll leave my positive 8 just hanging out over on the right I've got my 3x minus 5y and equals 2 so that one was okay so I'm just re rearranging the first one and now it looks like I'm gonna you know even if I multiply one or the other by a negative things aren't gonna cancel out but I can make um, I can make changes to both of them to make things cancel so I'm gonna multiply the first one by everything by negative 3 and I'm going to multiply the second one just by positive 2. So notice if I multiply everything by negative 3, I'll get negative 6x, negative 18y, and negative 24. On the second row, again I'm multiplying everything by 2. I'll get 6x minus 10y and positive 4 and well the reason I did that was because now my x's are going to cancel out when I do this addition so I'll add these together my 6 X's will cancel it looks like I'll get negative 18 Y plus negative 10 Y which is negative 28 Y negative 24 plus 4 is negative 20 I could divide both sides by negative 28 that would give me negative 20 over negative 28 two negatives make a positive looks like 4 goes into both of these and we would get five sevenths for y. Um, I'm about to run over the 10 minute YouTube time limit so I'm gonna have to cut this one short right here um, but the same idea now that you've got y you could simply go back and plug that into either your first equation or your second equation to solve this for x. Um, again you got fractions so the algebra will be a little tedious but if you have any questions just send me an email and um, I'll be happy to answer it for you.